Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening, Dr. Pradhan here. Uh, welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will continue the structural equation modeling. So, in the last class, we have uh, briefly highlighted the issues or you can say various concepts behind structural equation modeling. So, today we will specifically highlight the methodological issue and its application. So, structural equation modeling is a generalization approach to multivariate data analysis. So, we, we are jumping from single equation to simultaneous equation and simultaneous equation to structural equations. Okay. Structural equation mod in modeling structure is very, very, very important. Okay. So, we have to see how is the you know setup of structural equation modeling. So, now, so here the most important agenda is to find out the proper structure to find out to find out the proper structure ok. Find out the structure is the main agenda of structural equation modeling. So, I have already mentioned structural equation modeling it is approach to analysis of covariance it is the structure of analysis of covariance ok then analysis of causality this is analysis of covariance analysis of causality covariance or you can show that we can mention that it is co co covariance analysis of correlation ok analysis of causality one way and third analysis of causality two ways. Okay, this is one way causality, this is two way causality. Okay. So you see this particular two things will be called as a is purely on a regression analysis. Okay. It is nothing but the root of regression analysis. In fact, uh, correlation and regression in the same groups. So, where uh, we means uh, obviously if you will say regression then we are discussing the R square and which is the correlation coefficient for a bivariate setup. So, in fact, multivariate separate setups it may be multiple correlation coefficient. So, regression analysis basically deals with the causality issue and you know correlation issue then there is the analysis of causality in the two way interdependence uh, techniques. So, that is what we will call as a FA factor analysis ok. It is called as a factor analysis. So, a structural equation modeling is the integration of integration of factor analysis plus regression analysis ok. Factor analysis plus regression analysis. So, now uh, a, 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 you, a, if you will integrate these two, then obviously we have to highlight certain things here. So that means first thing is to test the, to test the, to test the relationship among the variable, to test the uh, relationship or to examine the relationship, relationship among the variables. Okay, variables to test the relationship among variables. This is the first objective and specify the models that explains the data, specify the models, specify the models that can incorporate the existing data, then you need to have a flexibility, you need to have a flexibility, you need to have a flexibility with respect to a continuous variables and discrete variables. because. Uh, structure cannot be directly connected with either continuous variable or discrete variable. So, you need to have a 
integration about continuous variable and discrete variables. For instance, uh, that is how sometimes we use dummy variables. Uh, some of the variables we cannot, uh, you can say, quantify properly. So we have to go for a qualitative a, a way, and we have to categorize uh, in such a way by using proxy. So as a result, the modeling structure can be uh, properly uh, evaluated. So okay, so this is uh, this is another interesting agenda of flexibility. Then significance of testing significance of testing significance 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 of testing and you can say uh, model fit model fit okay significance of testing and model fit these are the specific requirements so we need to have uh, in the case of structural equation modeling so structure is very important then within the structure we like to know or we like to establish the relationship um, relationship among the various variables and specify the exact model so that we usually call as a path model then uh, uh, to have that one so you need to have a little bit the flexibility or compromise between continuous variable and discrete variables then <coughs> uh, then obviously we have to highlight the significance of this testing and you know model fitness okay with this basic framework so we have to uh, highlight the detailed structure about the structural equation modeling. Before I highlight, I let, let you know a little bit the historical background behind the structural equation modeling. The structural equation modeling uh, root is from psychology. Okay, structural equation modeling origin. Structural equation modeling origin. So uh, once you know the origin, then you can get to know uh, on these futures why these futures are already uh, I means you need to have in the case of structural equation modeling for instance flexibility so suppose the flexibility between continuous and discrete is there so most of the variables in the psychology is very discrete in nature so, okay so once you really have a sometimes you know structure so we need to have a integration uh, otherwise or flexibility otherwise it is very difficult to uh, uh, handle so okay <coughs> so the first origin is the psychology okay psychology okay it is called as a because the origin uh, before we going to structural equation modeling i will give you the historical background how this structural equation modeling coming into the picture so in the psychology the most interdependence technique is called as a factor analysis okay then we have a genetic genetic uh, human genetics human genetics so human genetics will give you the approach of regression an analysis where the galton has started the you know <coughs> studying the height of son and father so they propose the idea of the regression analysis then thin biology biology it is the detection of path analysis okay then fourth economics economics it will give you the structural equation modeling uh, sorry simultaneous equation modeling simultaneous equation modeling okay then we have the integration of statistics in the statistics it is the you know uh, methods of maximum likelihood estimation it is the method of maximum likelihood estimation okay maximum likelihood estimation so that means you see here so uh, to know the structural equation modeling so you must have knowledge on factor analysis regression analysis path analysis simultaneous equation modeling and maximum likelihood estimation so this the integration all all these together is called as a structural equation modeling so that th that means you understand yourself how complexity is this particular problem so structural equation modeling is the highest uh, setup of this econometric modeling so here so there is use of various individual techniques like factor analysis regression analysis path analysis the simultaneous equation systems then maximum likelihood estimations so that means a, it is the it is the core area where psychologist human genetics biology economist and statistician uh, can work together or you can say uh, uh, integrated together to have a particular solutions okay so this is the basic framework of this simultaneous equation modeling okay so now so what is what is exactly the you can say uh, uh, you can say this particular structural equation modeling 
so structural equation modeling uh, as i have already mentioned structural equation modeling as i have mentioned there are two sets of uh, structures one is called as a structural equation structural equations and another setup is called as a modeling okay so that means here we have to find out the proper structure in an equation form in an equation form okay and molding here you have to transfer the uh, you know generalization problem theoretical problem into mathematical form so in this mathematical equation you must have some structures so that is how it is called as a so that means you bring the structure and you bring the molding then if you integrate you will get the structural equation molding okay so now the issue of uh, you know uh, uh, structural equation modeling is consist of two things so it is called as a latent variable and manifest variables so now for, so far the structure uh, structure is concerned it is the root for two things here is called as a, a, a you know latent variables latent variable and manifest variable manifest variable okay latent variable and manifest variable so now uh, the structure is, is that so you have to you have to find out the proper structure here in between the latent variable and manifest variables manifest variables means a uh, observed variables uh, which uh, which are in the form of both exogenous and endogenous they are very much observed it is readily available means that's why it's called as a data file then within the data files we have to find out a structures so that is in the form of a latent variables okay latent variables so now we have to find out how latent variable has a co close connection to each other again so that means it is all together three pillars okay three pillars of the system so one one pillar is the endogenous setup then latent and endogenous then another pillar is the exogenous setups and exogenous latent okay so it is integration between endogenous setup and uh, you can say exogenous setup endogenous latent and exogenous latent okay within basic within the basic step setup then we have to highlight this particular uh, setup okay so now uh, so far as the structural equation modeling is concerned so uh, as i have already mentioned basically we look for regression analysis then second thing is you know correlation analysis then obviously third thing we like to highlight the uh, uh, model fitness okay model overall model fitness okay overall model fitness generally you see here it's a very interesting thing uh, uh, because it is integration of so many things uh, together so uh, starting with regression analysis factor analysis then path analysis uh, and then you know simultaneous equation systems then maximum likelihood estimation etc etc but basically our observation is uh, 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 very limited here means we like to know where is the uh, means once you will apply the particular structures where we will set the regression and where we will set the correlations okay so so obviously it is the game between the regression and correlations okay so, but factor analysis and path analysis will give you the entire setup of structure only. So, the general framework uh, uh, which we can highlight here is like this. So, uh, when we we'll go for correlation, then it will give you degree of association. Okay, degree of association. Okay. So, this when we we'll go for regression analysis, it will give you direction of causality. It is give it will give you direction of causality. So, it is obviously one way casualty, okay. It is not like this, okay. It should not be like this because this is not allowed here in the case of structural equation modeling, which is very much allowed in the case of time series modeling, pure time series modeling. So, here uh, certain, I mean, so our core objective is to find out the degree of association that is your degree of, uh, uh, co uh, means degree of relationship between two or uh, two variables means within the particular uh, of course it is a multivariate framework so every time we like to know how these two variables are related to each other so that means it is the 
degree of association within that particular system so you have to there may be ma many variables say 10 variables so we like to know 10 5 5 endo and 5 exo so we like to know one variable endo with another variable endo how they are related whether the uh, the structure is the causality structure or it is the association the, uh, uh, relation only simple relation without having causality issue okay so that is how we have to bring this issue so now in the simple setup you see in the simple setup so we like to know what is the degree of association uh, uh, among the variables then casualty issue then model fitness test okay just like you when we will go for regression analysis regression analysis is a two specific objectives uh, one specific objective is what is the direction of causality and another specific objective is what is the uh, you know m m uh, goodness of fit that is uh, you know uh, uh, what is the goodness of fit which we will measure in the form of r squares okay so that means the value of r square is lies uh, 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 the value of r square lies between 0 to 1 so uh, close to 1 or uh, uh, equal to 1 will give you higher accuracy higher model fitness then the uh, you know r square uh, close to 0 uh, if it is close to 0 it is unfit or it is a you can say not suitable for this modeling okay so this is how we have to represent this so all together so we have to find out the regression coefficient correlation coefficient the significance of regression coefficient significance of correlation coefficient then finally overall fitness of the model so when we will go for regression analysis so here we have to find out the regression coefficient then when we will go for correlation you have to find out the association coefficients okay so then finally we will close together then we have to find out the model fitness test so like you know in the case of regression model fitness test is usually you can say not usually every time it is with respect to r square only coefficient of determination here model fitness can be observed with many indicators okay so i i just briefly highlight three main indicators through which we can represent the model uh, model accuracy that means once you prepare the structure ultimately the complete models with you so whether that model is systematically okay or not systematically okay it's very difficult to say without having sufficient indicators in your mind so here the sufficient indicator is there is some kind of uh, uh, reliable indicators through which we have to justify the model reliability okay means fitness of the model so that is why i have mentioned here model fitness so how do you observe this model fitness there are many indicators are there but briefly i will highlight three indicators one is called as a, a, a goodness of fit index goodness of fit index then adjusted goodness of fit index then third one is called as a, a standardized root mean square residual standardized root mean square residuals okay goodness of fit index it is nothing but the formula is one minus Mm, chi squares chi squares uh, for the default models for the default model divide by chi squares chi square for the null models okay null models so this is the gfi uh, goodness of fit index so now um, for you know uh, if gfi gfi is greater than to 0 0.9 then model is, will be considered uh, will be accepted or it is considered as the reliable model okay so if gfi that means gfi is higher the gfi greater the possibility of accuracy of the model if we lower the gfi then obviously model accuracy or model reliability is very low this is one of the indicators through which we have to justify the a model fitness of the a structural equation modeling okay then second is the adjusted uh, ad, uh, adjusted goodness uh, fit index which is nothing but one minus uh, one minus gfi okay goodness fit index okay multiplied by degrees of freedom degrees of freedom uh, of your model of your model divided by degrees of freedom for the baseline model for the baseline model baseline models okay baseline model <laughs> that means <coughs> in the case of regression analysis we use r square and adjusted r square adjusted r square is nothing but 1 minus 1 minus r square into n minus 1 by n minus k that is in adjusted r square means we have to adjust with the degree of freedom here, here also we are just doing the same thing uh, generally the component is goodness of fit index 
So, now uh, it has to be adjusted through proper degrees of freedom because uh, ultimately it is many variables game. So, once you involve more and more variables in the system, then obviously uh, it will affect the degrees of freedom. Okay. So, the degrees of freedom has to be taken care. So, as a result, a GFI will be uh, another indicator has to be uh, used uh, which can uh, which can take care the uh, overall fitness of the model and in the same times it can take care the you can say uh, uh, degrees of freedom. Okay. If a GFI a is greater than to 1 or equal to, equal to 1 means it is a perfectly fit of the models. I mean say a model perfect uh, perfectly fit if it is greater than to 1 then if it is less than to 0 then model is poorly fit. Okay. So, that that is why you have to be careful how you have to find out. Then it is a, a, a standardized root mean square residuals which is the average difference between the predicted and observed variance, variance covariance in the model uh, based on this you know standard uh, based on this uh, uh, standardized residuals. So, you know when this S, S R M S R is equal to 0 then obviously it is perfectly fit when it is you know greater than to 0 then obviously it is uh, totally unfit ok. So, that is why it should be close to 0 it should be close to 1 ok and it should be also uh, greater than to 1. So, in this scenario we have to observe the model fitness of this particular you can say uh, structural equation modeling with this basic framework. So, we we like to highlight the structural equation modeling ok the structural equation modeling you see here yes, it is it is I will give you two different models ok with a simple structures and then we will go for a complicated structure. So, you see so I have mentioned structural equation modeling structural equation modeling is the game between factor analysis plus you can say path analysis it is game between uh, you know uh, uh, path models and factor models ok factor models or uh, factor analysis or path analysis or you can say factor model and path model. Let me highlight what is factor model ok factor model means we start with like this few variables say x 1 ok x 1 then x 2 ok like say I uh, will take for simplicity I will put three variables only then x 3 ok then uh, ok uh, uh, x k since I mentioned here. So, we will let us say go for x k all right x k then similarly similarly you see here corresponding to this one. So, we have to create epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 epsilon k ok then these are all latent symbols these are all latent symbols these are all observed symbols ok these are all latent symbols these are all observed symbols then followed by delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 delta k ok. So, now how it is related you see uh, epsilon 1 depends upon x 1 x 2 x 3 x k similarly epsilon 2 depends upon x 1 x 2 x 3 x k x epsilon 3 depends upon x 1 x 2 x 3 x k similarly epsilon k depends upon x 1 x 2 x 3 and x k. So, this is how the structure of factor modeling ok. So, means it is all to all together very interdependent ok. So, that means what is the basic agenda of factor analysis is that. So, you have a set of observed variables ok. So, we have to create a latent variable latent variable means since you have to set uh, find out a new form of the uh, variables you have to create a set of variables which is the linear combination of original variables. So, of course, we have to assign with some weightage ok. So, I will mention here how the weightage can be considered here. So, let us say here. So, x 1 is equal to here lambda 1 1 epsilon 1 plus lambda 1 2 epsilon 2 plus you can say continue ok. So, lambda 1 k epsilon k plus delta 1 ok. Similarly, x 2 equal to lambda 2 1 epsilon 1 lambda 2 2 epsilon 2 continue lambda k uh, lambda this is 1 k ok. So, this is 2 k uh, epsilon k plus delta 2 similarly you continue ok. So, then x k is equal to lambda uh, lambda k 1 epsilon 1 lambda k 2 epsilon 2 continue lambda plus of course here 
लामडा के 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 इसलम के प्लस डेल्टा के सो दिस इज हाउ दिस सिस्टम विल बी ऑपरेट सो दैट मींस इट इज नथिंग बट द पिक्चर विल बी लाइक दिस एक्स आई इक्वल टू लामडा आई जे एफ प्लस डेल्टा आई ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इट्स कॉल्ड एज ए फैक्टर्स ओके सो दैट मींस दिस फैक्टर हैज ए मींस दिस इज द वेरिएबल व्हिच इज इंटीग्रेटेड विद सम फैक्टर्स एंड इट्स वेटेज विथ एरर टर्म्स ऑब्वियसली ए एज पर यू नो any type of statistical analysis error will be uh, error will be obviously must so whether you will go for regression analysis or whether you will go for factor analysis or whether you will go for structural equation modeling so error will be always must so with the particular setup so we have to bring how uh, how quickly you have to set up the structure to analyze the particular relationship okay so this is how you have to observe so that means Uh, uh, you know uh, uh, how do we construct all these things means so far as a factor is concerned so uh, there are many methods you can use to uh, transfer original variable to new form of the variables uh, uh, you can apply maximum likelihood estimation methods centroid methods or you can say you can apply principal component analysis generally principal component which is the popularly known as a pca is the most important mechanism which can transfer the original set of variable to Smaller number of variables, which is the linear combination of original variables. So now the how do you, how do you proceed mathematically? It's better when you have observed variables, then you find out the variance covariance matrix. So with the basis of variance covariance matrix, then uh, 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 we means variance covariance matrix with respect to its correlations. That means it's a correlation. Well, co variance covariance means like you know suppose there are three variables, x1, x2, x3. then this side x1 x2 x3 then obviously uh, we have correlation r11 r12 r13 r21 r22 r23 r31 r32 r33 okay so this is how the matrix can be designed okay so now with the uh, the moment you have uh, you have uh, a number of variables uh, forget about endogenous variable or exogenous variable for factor analysis it is not uh, required at all so factor uh, analysis we are assuming that all variables are interdependent to each other so there is no way to classify which one is the dependent structure and independent structure but to when we will go for regression analysis there is such color classification so now you see here so the structural equation modeling is the integration of two techniques where one one is the need of the uh, classification with respect to dependent and independent and another technique which the does not uh, require the classification dependent and independent so now we have to find out to you know just uh, we have to uh, the aim of the factor analysis is to transfer the original variables into some latent variables okay then regression analysis will observe so how the latent variable has a relationship with the other variables okay various latent variables and other variables okay so this is how the structure is all together we have to discuss in the case of structural equation modeling so now you 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 get to know what is the factor analysis and how you have to construct the factor so factor uh, factor analysis which is the weightage of various observed variables and the error terms okay so here our uh, um, uh, agenda is to minimize the error term that is you know the latent variable variance of latent variable depends upon two variance one is the common variance and another is equal to error variance so every time you have to minimize the error variance so that uh, the co uh, construct of a particular factor will be more practical more feasible and it can be useful for uh, you can say model forecasting or you can say policy use so with this particular setup so we like to highlight a, a, a means i will a, i will highlight here two different structural equation modeling so one is a simple one another is a little bit complex one okay so let's me uh, we start with a simple models so you see here uh, let's say this is structural equation modeling you know case ones case one structural modeling case one so here so i will take few variables say like you know this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 and this is x4 okay like you know let's say xk okay then i will call it here just i am integrating this what we have discussed in the case of factor uh, analysis right now so with the help of this factor analysis so i you know briefly highlight little bit something uh, more uh, uh, and we like to integrate with respect to structural equation modeling okay so now i will put it here 
let us say epsilon 1, epsilon 2, then epsilon 3, ok, uh, then you can say, uh, ok, uh, ok, you put it epsilon 3 only, 3, ok, there are 3 items only, ok, so then that means, it is not like that way, uh, if there are n number of variables, you, you will create n number of factors, it is not like that way, so there is the proper technique, how many factor you have to construct uh, actually, so with the basis of, you know, technicality so we have to uh, we have to find out how many factors we can able to construct in this particular uh, available information or available uh, uh, data okay so now uh, if this is the case then obviously you have to uh, make an integration you see here so x1 has a connection is like this x1 uh, x x2 uh, x1 has a connection like this x1 x3 has a connection like this similarly so we have uh, we have x1 so like this then uh, we have x3 like this uh, then you have x2 like this x3 x uh, x3 like this okay so it's better you connect like this okay this is this is okay and then similarly and this is okay connected this is connected then this is a has to be connected this has to be connected similarly uh, <coughs> And this is already connected, this is already connected, so you have to connect like this way. So, this is how the factor analysis. So, now what you have to do? So, you like to know, uh, you know, oh, this is the relationship you have to see here, okay. So, how quickly they are related to each other, okay. Okay, so many, so many uh, relations you can find out in between all these two, okay. So, this is how the picture all about this. Uh, <coughs> this is simple structure of you can say structural equation modeling so how the system are correlated to each other okay so here <coughs> here what you have to do this particular line will give you the indication of regression coefficient okay so this particular line will give you regression coefficient okay so that means you see a, a when we will go for factor analysis then obviously every factor has a uh, summation of uh, uh, let us say lambda i x i ok. So, the lambda is the coefficient to uh, particular independent variable like this uh, ok uh, f i equal to summation lambda i x i ok i equal to 1 plus you can say uh, delta ok plus delta ok uh, the way you have to uh, you have to minimize then obviously delta will be removed then finally you will get lambda 1 x 1 lambda 2 x 2 up to lambda k x k ok. So, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda k these are all weightage ok. In the regression analysis these are the coefficients which you have to observe ok. So, now the, this is how the lines are uh, this uh, straight lines are a mean, uh, mean, means it is an indication that we have to uh, uh, means it will be recognize the regression coefficient that means it is the a causality issue from this to this, how they are integrated and uh, uh, what is the weightage factors, ok. So, is it, is it high or is it low? So, this is how we have to observe. So, that means this lambda i, all these things will be coming here only. So, this in the straight line only. So, this is the regression weightage, ok, or otherwise called as a regression coefficient. However, this, uh, this uh, row, uh, you know, this row, the indication, this one is a correlation uh, coefficient. This is the indication of correlation coefficient this is the indication of correlation coefficient correlation coefficient ok and this is how we have to observe like this to oh, you can say uh, prepare a structural equation modeling ok so I, I will go little bit advanced than this particular structure ok this is ok so now uh, once I will go little bit advanced then obviously I will put like this ok let us say this is x1 x2 x3 then a, x4 then continue up to xk then obviously we have the same same latent variables lambda uh, epsilon 1 epsilon 2 then epsilon 3 but you remember this ones <coughs> this particular symbol this particular symbol is the observed symbols ok observe this means it is readily available and this particular symbol means it is a creative it is a latent variables, ok, latent variables, we we have to artificially create this ones, latent variables, which is not directly available or observable. So, uh, this is the connected, so now we have to connect like this way, epsilon 1 depends upon x1, x2, x3, 
x force x k similar epsilon 2 depends upon x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 uh, x k similar e 3 depends upon x 1 x 2 x 3 x 4 and x k all right so corresponding x 1 so then obviously we will call it delta 1 this is called it delta 2 this is called it delta 3 this is called it delta 4 okay this is called as a delta k okay this will be supported by delta k all right so now obviously obviously uh, this is also this is some uh, uh, you can say uh, let's say uh, zeta okay so zeta 1 then this is uh, zeta 2 okay this is zeta 3 okay so this is this is how the indications uh, this is how the indication all about okay so this is how the indication all about okay so that means you see here so now i have already mentioned so when we will go for structural equation modeling then obviously there are uh, four different shapes one shape is uh, depend independent with the independent latent independent observed or independent manifest with the independent latent then another setup is the dependent uh, dependent manifest uh, uh, or dependent observe then a dependent latent okay so there are four four pillars to all together so independent observe independent latent dependent observe and dependent latent then we have to see how this finally independent latent and dependent latent are integrated so the integration of independent latent and dependent latent is called as a path analysis however the moment you will integrate the uh, you know uh, observe independent observes with the independent latent is called as a factor models similarly dependent uh, dependent uh, observes and dependent latent when you will close it is called as another factor model so now we have factor model from the uh, endogenous sites and we have a, a you know factor model from exogenous site so now together when will the endogenous latent and exogenous latent if will integrate then that will create you path model so that means structural equation modeling is the integration of factor modeling and path modeling so we have to find out particular Fact, uh, you know structures so that structure will give you we, uh, means will be analyzed with the help of factor analysis and path analysis so this is one part of the problem where uh, we have observed the dependent uh, independent clusters with independent latent so that means it is you know uh, a lambda one is a, you know uh, uh, you have to calculate like that way x1 equal to uh, means when we will calculate latent uh, latent variable one then obviously uh, so here the error term is involved so and here the error term is involved that means you see these are all variables so these are variables are not fully involved so it is the, so uh, you know error component is delta one this is error component is delta two this is error component is delta three this is error component is delta four this is error component is delta k similarly in the case of latent variable 1 epsilon 1 epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 so the error which we insert is zeta 1 zeta 2 or zeta 3 okay so now this is one part of the problem so where we are integrating a exogenous cluster with the exogenous latent so similarly we have to create a another uh, another factor models where endogenous cluster with integrate with the en endogenous uh, latent okay so let me highlight here so this is another way so i will put some variables y1 so y2 okay y2 then y3 so it will continue say yk okay so these are all you can say and 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 uh, endogenous variables this is endogenous variables y so this symbol will be indicates endogenous variables okay that means it's observed variables then we have to create a latent uh, we have to create a latent so let's say uh, this is a, a you know uh, eta uh, eta 1 then this is eta 2 ok eta 1 and eta 2 so now how is the connection eta 1 has a connection with y1 y2 y3 then y, yk similarly eta 2 has a connection with the 
y1, y2, y3 and yk. Okay. So, this is how a, then obviously its error component is you can say epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, a, okay, epsilon or you can say k. Okay. So, then this is you know uh, the error component which you put it is a zeta uh, zeta uh, 1 zeta 1 okay and zeta uh, 2 okay zeta 2 so this is error component okay so that means this is this is called as a this eta uh, 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 1 and eta 2 is called as a uh, latent latent dependent variables latent dependent variables okay and y1 y2 is called as a uh, is called as a uh, observe dependent variables it's called as a observe dependent variables or manifest or manifest dependent variables dependent variables okay these are all error terms these error terms are for dependent clusters and these error terms for uh, latent dependent variables okay so this is another side of the problem so this is one part of the uh, structural equation modeling and uh, uh, which we have just discussed another part of the regression modeling uh, means uh, structural equation modeling so now we have to integrate the both uh, in see you know latent independent to latent dependent then we will find out is there any structure between the latent independent to latent dependent if that is the so then it is called as a uh, uh, it is called as a path model and we like to integrate this factor model with path model then we will highlight the issue of means it is all uh, it is the question of the structural equation modeling so that means there is a need of some path so that path is nothing but a structure so if there is any structure then obviously path model and factor model will give you the structural equation modeling if there is no such path then obviously there is no question of structural equation modeling so you have to just end with this factor analysis on the transfer the variable find out the weightage then you have to analyze with the different issues okay so now here we have to see whether factor analysis can be applied to this particular problem so that means we have to transfer the original variable into some uh, latent variables then similarly it means in the independent side similarly in the case of dependent side you have to transfer the original setup into the a, a, a dependent uh, many, uh, you know latent variables so now i will club these together then we will see what is the results here so now the moment i will club these two together then it will come like this way okay so what i will do here so you check it here this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 continue this is xk okay this is xk so similarly so what i have done i have put epsilon 1 epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 so this is latent so the symbol will be like this all right then other sides so we have y1 y2 y3 then yk okay it is not necessary that both will be same okay it may be it may be different okay it may be different it may be different okay so then corresponding to dependent variable dependent observed variables there is a latent variable called eta 1 and eta 2 so these are symbols like these circles okay so now we will connect here so we will connect like this okay we will connect like this we will connect like this okay similarly we will connect here like this all right this is this is you know structure of this is the structure of uh, uh, this is the structure of you know this is factor model one factor model one this is factor model two factor model two okay so that means this is independent variables independent latents dependent variable dependent latent so now we have to find out whether there is any path so let us assume that there is a any in search there is a path okay this connection will be like this and the connection will be like this okay then and then the correction will be the connection will be like this okay then the connection will be like this okay 
the connection will be like this okay so this is how then obviously there is a relationship okay bidirectional there is a bidirectional so this is bidirectional okay this is bidirectional then obviously uh, there is a relationship okay there is a relationship okay so then and then we have to know the relationship like this okay similarly we can have also here the relationship like this okay generally it will come like this it will become like this okay so this is the complete form of this structural equation modeling this is the complete framework of structural equation modeling so all together so we have four different setup okay so first setup is the independent clusters independent latent dependent cluster dependent latent then we have to observe this particular structure so now uh, now uh, uh, you know you have to see here so this particular setup this particular setup this particular setup this particular setup is called as a path model this particular setup is called as a path models okay this particular setup is called as a path models all right so now so we we highlight here you see here uh, error term will be delta 1 error term will be delta 2 error term will be delta 3 error term will be delta k then it will be uh, zeta 1 zeta 2 then uh, zeta 3 okay then zeta uh, k okay similarly uh, there is error term c here so uh, okay i uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, you know these are all regression coefficient these are all regression coefficient i i can cite it here this one is uh, uh, lambda 1 1 okay this is lambda 1 2 lambda 1 2 okay La, uh, sorry this is lambda 2 1 this is lambda 3 1 this is a uh, this is uh, in epsilon e1 no? so this will be connected here again so this is lambda k1 okay so this is this is how the structure is all about this is lambda k2 okay this is lambda k3 okay so this is how these are all regression coefficient similarly this is you can say i i'll call it this one is beta 1 1 and then uh, beta two ones then beta three one okay then uh, uh, this is beta k ones okay similarly beta n k uh, sorry this is two k okay two k this is beta two put k, beta k two so this is how you have to connect like this one so then this is i'll call it a gamma one one then this is gamma one two then this is gamma two one okay gamma gamma 2 3 okay so then this is uh, this is theta 2 1 this is theta 2 2 2 2, two, two. this is theta 2 3 okay uh, theta 2 2 3 right this is theta 2 3 like this okay so this is our in fact it's very <coughs> the model is very complicated so uh, uh, means ultimately what is our uh, aim is here so uh, oh, the way we have given the structures that is how it's called as a structural equation modeling so here uh, uh, certain things are very much important here so you every uh, the structure is itself very important then every connection is uh, connected with some weightage that is we call it the coefficients so we like to uh, the moment you uh, means here the uh, main uh, uh, main objective is to fill to find out what are this weightage all these comp regression coefficient the coefficient will be highlight what are the variable influence on the latent variable similarly you have to find out the weightage of all these factors here then uh, then you have to find out the weightage of all these factors here then obviously we have to find out the relationship here so that means we uh, all to all together so we have to find out the a regression coefficients and we have to find out the correlation coefficient for summary uh, you know for su summarization so if i 
if you really summarize this particular uh, you can say model then obviously there are certain uh, cluster here so the cluster will be like this way so one cluster will be x1 up to xk okay so this particular cluster is called as a exogenous clusters it is called as a exogenous exogenous cluster or sometimes it is called as a manifest clusters manifest clusters okay so similarly then y1 y2 up to yk it is called as a endogenous clusters endogenous clusters and again it is called as a endo manifest variables this is endo manifest and endo manifest variables this is called as a exo manifest uh, variables okay Ma variable exo manifest variable clusters similarly then epsilon 1 epsilon 2 epsilon 3 okay so this particular structure is called as a latent variables latent latent uh, this is called as a latent uh, exogenous variables latent latent exogenous variables okay then uh, then another set is eta 1 and eta 2 eta 1 eta 2 okay this is how uh, eta 1 eta 2 this is called as a um, um, this is called as a latent latent endogenous variable endogenous variable okay blender or sometimes it is called as a construct construct endogenous variables this is also called as a construct exogenous variable construct exogenous variable so this is how the uh, full uh, you know um, uh, you know structural equation modeling so far as a structure is concerned it's very beauty it looks like a very beautiful uh, the structure identification is very simple you know uh, also very beautiful but the thing is mathematical derivation or mathematical simplicity is a little bit complex so it is not so easy mathematically to calculate all these parameters at a time but you know so far as the classroom angle is concerned uh, structural equation modeling to handle in the classroom problem is very difficult uh, it requires lots of estimation lots of connections lots of integration it's not so easy so that's why there is a tech you know particular proper uh, softwares so with the help of softwares you have to get these results okay very easily so it is sometimes it is very window based programming like you know there are two uh, beautiful package uh, you can say uh, that is a uh, amos package and legeral these two packages are very useful for handling structural equation modeling okay so the once you, uh, the important thing is that you have to come out with a proper structure without having structure it's very difficult to handle such type of problem because it's a very interesting problem very a uh, accurate problem so far as a uh, uh, you know societal problem is concerned or business problem is concerned because uh, in a societal problems or business problem lots of thing very integrated and within that particular setups we uh, 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 there may be different structures so we need to have a close integration with different structure and different integration so that we can generalize that problems and that generalized model can be utilized for forecasting and also policy use without having proper without knowing anything about the proper structure or you can say proper interdependence uh, interdependence relationship it's very difficult to handle that we, which we have highlighted in the case of simultaneous equation modeling because if we apply directly OLS technique to particular equations without having sufficient knowledge on other information about that particular model and it is very difficult to estimate the parameters you can do that once but the estimated parameter will be give you by the result and that model cannot be used for forecasting or policy uses that's why it's better uh, to find out either you find you directly handle the structural equation modeling with the proper structure with the integration of path model and factor model so then you will come out with the various uh, results of all regression coefficient correlation coefficient that is causality and uh, 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 correlations so that we, we can generalize in a uh, systematic way uh, so, far, uh, so far as a reporting is concerned it's very easy to get the moment you will enter the data 
and obviously you can get the uh, results but the thing is that uh, this interpretation is very interesting yes because so many coefficients are there so many relationships are there it's not so easy to interpret at a time so it requires lots of uh, uh, intelligence how you to handle such type of problems this is very complicated problem uh, the diagram itself is very eye catching but uh, so far as a mathematical derivation is concerned it is it becomes too difficult to handle uh, you know manually so uh, uh, you have to be very careful how you have to handle that particular problem in a software uh, in fact the situation is more dangerous when you have series of variables independent variable and series of dependent variables and within that particular series you have a number of number of uh, you know uh, latent independent variables and latent dependent variables then in that case it is more and more complicated but uh, for, you know uh, the most important thing is that you cannot arbitrarily create uh, so many latent independent variable and so many latent dependent variables it depends upon your problem for formulation and within the problem for formulation how how many ways you can prepare the structure and that structure can be highlighted with the help of the structural allocation modeling so with this uh, uh, because of lack of time i have not touched any application of part in fact deeply i highlighted that issue of education experience and that uh, preparedness etc but in real world uh, you have to come out with a very proper problem and you have to analyze uh, so in the meantime so we have to stop this particular class uh, thank you very much have a nice day